Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to do a dye over eyes sweatshirt. I picked up this laundry basket from the dollar store and I put the wiffle balls down at the bottom, not necessarily to try to make the flower pattern, but more to elevate the sweatshirt up off the bottom of the basket. That way the ice can melt through. And then I do not turn my sweatshirts inside out. The inside is the polyester blend and I want to have the most vibrancy possible, so I just leave them right side out. And then I'm going to stick it down into this laundry basket and I'm just going to scrunch it up the best that I can. I want to try to do the tall deep scrunches, but the sweatshirt is bigger than the laundry basket, so just do the best you can. So now that I have it all scrunched up, I'm going to stick it down inside of a tote. But I don't want the basket just sitting on the bottom of the tote because I don't want it sitting in any of the muck. So I'm using the cooling rack that I got from Amazon. And there's a link for it down below in the description box along with everything else that I use. It's the cooling rack that has the feet. And then I'm going to add my ice. But I don't want huge blocks of ice, so I took these chunks and I took the bag to the floor and I just bashed it until it became loose. Um, you know, with big chunks of ice, they're going to take a long time to melt, and also then the dye isn't going to be able to penetrate through. So you want to have your small pieces of ice. And then I'm just going to add the dye. So what I'm doing here is I have a bunch of dye in these bottles and it's pre-mixed for hot water irrigation. And I don't use greens very often. Uh, these have been sitting in the dye bottles since when I did the thermal hoodies a long time ago. So I thought I would use it up. And then I thought since it's already pre-mixed with the soda ash, it might not be as concentrated as I wanted to. So I just took the forest green and I added a little, a little more over top. And then I'm just gonna do what I usually do and sprinkle more dye all over the ice. Once you get the dye on the project the way that you want it, you want to give the project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure. There is a lot of ice on here and you want to make sure to keep your pH up around 10.5 because all of that water could push the soda ash out. And then I'm cleaning out the freezer so I'm just using up all of my old ice on this one. So I add a second layer of ice over top of all of this just to help the dye get moving. I came back and checked it the next morning after all of the ice had melted and it's really dark on top and I'm not too happy about that. And then checking the underneath, there are a lot of really light areas and even some areas that look like they don't have much dye at all. So I decided that I would just re-scrunch the whole thing. So I tried to bring all of the really light parts up to the very top and pushing the darker parts down to the bottom. And then I'm just going to repeat the process. So we all know the saying, hindsight is 2020, and I should have probably just left well alone, 
but I just couldn't help myself. It was just so dark in some areas and so light in others and I just couldn't stand it. And now I'm using my Pribcho ice and the only reason why I'm pointing that out is for those of you that might be curious about the bigger ice machine. I don't use it very often, but this is what it looks like. And instead of using the dark green, I'm only going with the forest green and the avocado because it's already so dark, I don't wanna make it darker. And then again, I'm adding a second layer of ice just to help things get moving and another sprinkle of soda ash. And I'm gonna let the ice melt and then I'm going to batch it for 48 hours after the ice melts. So it's just so dark and I want to tell you guys though, you know, don't freak out until after it's washed and dried because things when they're fresh and wet from dying, they look so different when they're washed and they're dried. So first you want to start by using cold water and that's going to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric and then increase your water up to hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I do however many hot water cycles it takes until the hot water is clear and I use Kirilon. And then I do a final hot water wash using Milsoft and Milsoft is a professional fabric softener and I get Kirilon and Milsoft both from Dharma Trading Company and there are links for it down below in the description box to help you find them if you're interested in buying them. And then I'll put it in the dryer or I'll hang dry it or I'll do whatever. This one went into the dryer and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our dye over ice sweatshirt after it's been washed and dried. And I'm not really 100% sure how I feel about this. It has grown on me. I made this sweatshirt back uh, before St. Patrick's Day because I wanted to make something green for you guys to see. And so I've been, you know, staring at it for some time, waiting for, you know, to fall in love with it. And right now it's currently in the re-dye pile. I think I'm probably going to strip it and try again. So Bella wearing it outside in somewhat of some sunshine, it sort of has a glowing effect. I like the pictures of it flat on the kitchen floor a lot better because there's more depth to the colors. But I can tell you this, I don't care for the front of the sweatshirt. Those big green blobs are overpowering. Way too much of the forest green and the dark green. I was way, way too heavy handed. Now the back, I like the back. It has a much better scrunch pattern going on and a better mixture of the colors. So I share with you guys the good, the bad, the ugly, I've been really sitting on this one for a long time because I've just been so hesitant about it. But the more that I'm looking at the photographs, the more I'm realizing it's not that bad. You know, like these close-up shots right here, it's actually kind of pretty. But you guys have heard me say before that green is just really not my color. I have a hard time working with it. So anyways, what do you guys think of the sweatshirt? Go ahead and leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie dyeing.